Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to have some heating and cooling curve problems. Oh Lord. Again. A fucking game. Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Okay, so let's start with the first problem. So a bag of ice was placed on a patient's head. The ice bag contained 220 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius. When the ice bag was removed, all the ice inside had melted and the liquid had a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. How many joules of heat were added? Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is to identify whether it's a heating or cooling curve problem. Okay, so usually professors or teachers do not really give the answer right away. So you have to analyze. What's up with that? So this one is obviously a heating curve. Why? Because there is melting. Okay, the ice inside had melted. So you have to draw now a heating curve like this so that it will be easier to visualize. Next, you have to determine the current state of your sample and the end point. It says here that the ice bag contained ice at zero degrees Celsius. So you are here at zero, right? It also says that the ice had melted and the liquid had a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. So the end point is here. And now we can solve this problem. Okay, so class, remember that in a heating curve, the horizontal line or the plateau is the phase change. And we use the formula moles times heat of fusion or heat of vaporization, right? Just a recall. And the slope, the um, vertical, the slant line, is the change of temperature. And when we have a change in temperature, we use the formula heat is equal to mass times specific heat of water times delta T or the change in temperature. Sir, I was not ready for that. Based on the graph, we start in the plateau. It is where the zero degree ice is changed to zero degree water. So. Okay, so these are the formula. And the first step will be the zero degree ice to zero degree water. Okay, so first we need to get the moles of water, right? So 220 grams of water times the molar mass of H2O, which is 18.02, right? Since you're asked for the moles, the moles should be in the numerator so that the grams will be canceled. Okay, so I hope you remember your dimensional analysis. So solving this, you will have 12.21 uh, 12 mole. So now we can use this mole to our equation, mole times the heat of fusion, right? 12.21 mole times 6.01 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this heat of fusion is constant per substance. Okay, so if you have ethanol, it would be different. So this 6.01 kilojoules per mole is for water. Okay, so solving for this, you will have 73.3821 kilojoules. Now, usually I don't round off. Okay, I round off at the end. Okay, so now I have zero degree water. What's the next step? We need to go from zero degree of water to 21 degrees water. Okay, that's our endpoint, right? And the formula again is the MCAT, okay? Mass times specific heat times the change in temperature. Change of temperature is just final temperature minus initial temperature, okay? So what is the mass? It's 220 grams times specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius times 21 because that is your final temperature minus zero degree Celsius, right? I hope you can follow. Then just use your calculator. Then you will get 19,330.08 joules, okay? Now we are asked for the total heat added, okay? 
So what are, what are you going to do? You will just add Q1 or the Q from the first step and the Q from the second step. Okay, so that would be a Q total is equal to Q1 plus Q2. So since we are ask for the joules, convert kilojoules to joules first. Okay, units are very important. So that would be 73382.1 joule plus 19330.08 joule. This will give me 92712.18 joule. Okay, and then following the correct significant figures, based on the given, you have four significant figures, right? So this would be 9.271 times 10 raised to the fourth power joules. Okay, I hope this is clear. Now let's have another one. I'm so tired, yeah. I would die. I'm so tired. I'm really tired. How many kilojoules of heat are needed to completely vaporize 50 grams of water at 100 degrees Celsius? So let's have our graph again. So this is the heating curve for water. By the way, again, if you watched the previous video, heating curves usually they look like this. The length of each part just differs, but they are the same. Now, it says here, you have to completely vaporize water at 100 degrees Celsius. So what does it mean? It means that your sample or your substance here is at the start of vaporizing. So you will have your substance here, okay, at 100 degrees Celsius. Again, this one is... 100% liquid and 0% gas. What you want to get is this one, 0% liquid and 100% gas, okay? As you can see, this is a plateau, right? So what we're going to do is to use the molar heat of fusion or vaporization. It will be molar heat of vaporization because you're vaporizing, right? Again, molar heat of fusion is for melting. So that would be Q is equal to N times the molar heat of vaporization. Okay, now let's solve first for the grams or the moles rather of water. Okay, so this will be our step, 100 degrees of water to 100 degrees of vapor. So now I have 50 grams of water times one mole over 18.02 grams of H2O. Okay, so cancel the grams, you will get 2.77 moles. And then I can use this 2.77 mole to solve for Q. That would be 2.77 mole times 40.67 kilojoules per mole, okay? So again, this is constant for water. So solving this, you will get 112.6559 kilojoules, okay? So following the correct significant figures, as you can see, you have three significant figures. So that will be 113 kilojoules for our final answer. Questions? Well, if you have questions, just put it in the comment section. I don't want to. Okay, now let's have our last, I think the last problem. Yeah, so this one. An ice cube tray contains enough water at 22 degrees Celsius to make 18 cubes, each of which has a mass of 30 grams. The tray is placed in a freezer that uses dichlorodifluoromethane as a refrigerant. The heat of vaporization of CF2Cl2 is 158 joules per gram. Okay, some books they say kilojoules per gram, but that's just weird. It's too big. Okay. So what mass of CF2Cl2 must be vaporized in the refrigeration cycle to convert all the water at 22 degrees Celsius 
to ice at negative 5.0 degrees. The heat capacities for H2O and H2O liquid are 2.08 joule per gram degree Celsius and 4.18 joule per gram degree Celsius respectively. And the enthalpy of fusion for ice is 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that was a lot. Okay, again, what is our first step? Determine whether this problem is a heating curve or a cooling curve problem, right? So just by analysis, you will know that this is not a heating curve problem. The technique here is to look at the end point or the end product, okay? And the end product of this problem is ice at negative 5 point degrees Celsius, okay? So meaning from something really hot, you want to get something really cold. And that is a cooling curve, okay? So this graph is a cooling curve, the usual. So now let's identify our um let's identify our substances. Okay. So we want to go to here negative 5.0 degrees Celsius from here roughly from 22 degrees Celsius. So how many steps are we go are we going to have? We're going to have three steps, right? So the first step is from 22 degrees Celsius of liquid water to zero degrees Celsius of liquid water. So that is our first step. The second step is from zero degrees Celsius of liquid water to zero degrees Celsius of solid water. Okay, the plateau. And then another slope, the third one is from zero degree solid water to negative five degree solid water, okay? And again, slope, change in temperature, plateau, change in phase, and the third one is another change in temperature. So you should know the formula by now. <laughs> so I have here the three steps. Now, since this is a change in temperature, the first step is a change in temperature problem, we use the formula Q is equal to M cat, okay? Mass times specific heat times the change in temperature, okay? So how do we get the mass of our substance, okay? So the total mass of H2O, it says here you have to make 18 cubes. Okay, so you write 18 cubes of water, and then each of which has a mass of 30 grams. So 18 times 30, cancel the cubes, you'll get 540 grams of H2O. Okay, that's your total mass. And we know that we're going to need the number of moles. Let's convert this mass to the, to the moles of water. So 540 grams of water, the molar mass of water is 18.02, so cancel the grams, you will get 30 moles of water. Okay, now we can solve them. Okay, so Q is equal to 540 grams of water, and in the problem, it says that the specific heat is 4.18. So just multiply them, 540 times 4.18, times zero minus 22 degrees Celsius, okay? So this will give me negative 4.97 times 10 raised to four joules, okay? Now, if you get something like decimals, it's also fine. I just use the scientific notation, okay? So that it will be easier for me. Tama. Okay, so we have the first heat. Now let's have the second step. This is the plateau. So change in phase. And when there's change in phase, you will use the mole and molar heat of fusion. So Q is equal to N times negative molar heat of fusion. Why is it negative? Because this is a cooling curve. 
So just substitute 30 moles of H2O times negative 6.01 times 10 raised to the third joules per mole. So you will get negative 1.80 times 10 raised to 5 joules. So the third step is another slope. So this is your 0 degrees solid water to negative 5. So again, we're going to use MCAT. So 540 grams times 2.08, which is given, times negative 5, because that's your final temperature, minus 0, the initial temperature, okay? And the product will be negative 5.6 times 10 raised to the third joules. Now, to get the Q total, it's just Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. So add this, and the sum will be negative 2.35 times 10 raised to the 5, or 5th power joules. Okay, so what does this mean? It, it's negative because it's the amount of heat you need to release. Okay, that's why it's negative. And, of course, this is not the final answer because we are asked to get the mass of dichlorodifluoromethane. So we're going to use this one, 2.35 times 10 raised to the fifth power joules, not the negative one, because again, it's just a symbol that the heat is released. Okay, so multiply this to the heat of vaporization of dichlorodifluoromethane, which is 158 joules per gram. Okay, so cancel the joules, you will get gram, which is 1.49 times 10 raised to the third power gram of Cf2Cl2. Okay, so this is the mass of Cf2. 2Cl2 that needs to be vaporized. Okay, again, just to reiterate, when we solve the final answer, there's no negative because, again, please, you can't get a negative mass. Okay? What? No! Yes? Maybe. Now, I want you to try these two problems on your own. So, I included the answers. So, how many joules are required to convert 10 grams of solid ethyl alcohol at negative 180.3 degrees Celsius to the vapor state at the boiling point of 78.3 degrees Celsius? And then, I also have this one. The other one. It's too long. I won't read it. Okay. So, you need to get, for number one, you need to get um 13.1 kilojoules but since you're asked to get the um joules it should be no it should be 13,100 only remove the other zero you need to get near this number and for number two it's 6.63 degree celsius so good luck thank you